Welcome back to Live with RX Muscles Iron Road to the Olympia 2017. I'm your host Dave Palumbo and today's guest is the giant killer himself, David Henry. You're looking giant. It's cool, people. <laughs> <laughs> giant killer, but you're looking giant. This is the biggest I've ever seen you look. What are you weighing over there? Uh, I think I was about 217 this morning. Oh, that, oh, you're way bigger than you were last year. That's crazy. <laughs> You, you look like you gained 10 pounds. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can see that. And I can see if you're in shape because I can see your face. Your face is, is all sunken in, so I know, you, I know you're suffering, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, I kind of feel like crap right now, now but uh, <laughs> it's part of the course. You told me off camera that you just ate 1,000 grams of carbs the other day. Is that true? Uh, yesterday, yeah. <laughs> is your metabolism cranking that much? It, it is. Uh, once once my diet starts going, man, uh, my body just it's like a machine and just starts rolling. These guys better be very very scared because I you know the look that you brought to the Arnold Classic earlier this year where you placed I would say a controversial second place. Uh, a lot of people thought you should have won the show. I mean, this is by and far a lot bigger than you were at the Arnold. I mean, I I, I can't even believe the gains that you're making still at your age. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, just just working smarter, man. You know, um, definitely harder, but working smarter along the way, uh, taking a lot of a lot of things, um, yeah, precautionary, and just 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 being uh, better overall health, man. With uh, and again, with everything as it is, but a little better overall health uh, with things going on as they are with the industry. Does that, yeah, does that scare you when you hear about all these deaths in our industry, like especially in a short period of time? Does that start making you take inventory of what you're doing? You know, it, it, it did and, uh, and it didn't all at once. It, it did because I, uh, you know, I got a bunch of phone calls and text messages from people. Uh, you know, of course, your loved ones and stuff that care about you and, and how you're doing know what you do. Uh, you know, just saying you're an important person to be around, you know, and you got a lot of life to live after all this. So, yes, that was a part that made you take it uh, into account and reevaluate your your uh, choices and stuff. And everything's a choice. But uh, and on this other hand, I was like, well, you know, I know the things I'm doing and not doing. So uh, not really overall too concerned with that, you know. You 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 look a lot bigger. I'm gonna I'm I see it. I can just see it in you. The shoulders, the arms. Now the here's the, the thing. The knock against you and the people always criticize is your legs. Your legs don't look as great as your upper body. They're not as big. I know now you you're not you know traveling as much. You're you're not in the military. You've been retired. You can dedicate yourself full time pretty much to bodybuilding. Um, will we see a, a dramatically improved David Henry from top to bottom this year? Uh, I'm going to say so. Uh, I just, uh, was down at New Haven gym on uh, Sunday, uh, posing or actually Tuesday posing with Kenny Wallach. And, uh, I'll tell you what, um, the, the leg training has changed and, uh, there will be, uh, improvement again from what you saw at the Arnold till now as well. Now it's gotta be frustrating because you know, you, you're very strong. I've seen you, you're pushing a lot of weight in the gym and obviously, you know, you're a very seasoned veteran at this point. You you know how to train yourself. Is it hard to like maybe take a step back and say, you know what, I got a weaker body part. I got to reevaluate how I train and change it because it, you know we get stuck in our ways to a certain degree. We we do, and uh, that's uh, definitely a good point. Uh, but no, um, it's not that the, the weaker body part, as far as physically, is I over the years I've learned to. Uh, get more in tune uh, with, with the lower half and, and, and feel it work in the way it does uh, versus my upper upper body, of course. And so because of that, we've dialed down, uh, when I say we, I mean my, my uh, trainer, Scott Stevenson, we dialed down the upper body stuff um, in volume and increased it lower. So that's just basically flip-flopped, if you will. Now, I interviewed Jose Raymond the other day, and I asked him about the Arnold Classic. Uh, the fact that he uh, wound up in third place and that you beat him. And he said, well, you know, David and, and Ashkenani have great upper bodies, but they have very weak legs, and, and I'm complete from top to bottom, and I just kind of stuck out, and that's why, I didn't, that's why I didn't, you know, I was third place. How do you respond to that statement? Hmm. You know what, I'm, I, you know, I have really no arguments, you know, with, with the NS stuff. As far as weak legs, you're going to know with that all the time. Uh, you know, that's everybody's go-to, and that's fine. 
Uh, but when you are, are shredded, and my, my trademark is conditioning, uh, weak legs or not, you know, at least, at least you, you pay attention to your diet, you get everything down pat, the, the size will come on. If you're doing it smart, if you're concentrating the way you're supposed to, reevaluating uh, body parts and, and adding in the exercises where you need to, uh, the stuff will come up. You know, despite, like, you know, you said age wise, you know, you got Dex who's still making improvements <laughs> up into his age. It's like, wow, man. So, I mean, I'm not putting myself in the same category. However, I am making uh, the same amount of gains. I am still uh, gaining that type of uh, muscle maturity, the, the graininess, um, those things as well. But mentally, I think the maturity level is coming up as well. And David, let, let's face it, you don't have weak legs. You have a, a, a crazy freaky upper body is really what it amounts to. Because, um, you know, you, to say you have weak legs is ridiculous. You know, you don't have weak legs. But uh, let's talk about the, when you won the 202 Olympia, you know, a lot of people out there, they don't know history of the sport. Originally, the, the division started as a 210 division. Uh, and then it, it went to a 202. Now, you, I, I believe you won it when it was 210, right? No, I won it when it was uh, 202. Oh, you was two, oh, 202 you won? Okay, so you won the Olympia when it was 202. And yeah, you were kind of the king of, of, of the division at that point. And then Kevin English came around and you guys had some battles. And then they raised the, the weight limit to 212, which for a guy of your height seemed to be a slightly disadvantage because some of the taller guys now were able to sneak into that division where they weren't before. Now it seems like you've caught up weight-wise with these guys, when you told me what you weighed today, I was shocked because I know you're always usually around 200 pounds. Um, do you think now with the added size you have going into this Olympia that you can match up against because Flex uh, Lewis? Because a lot, it doesn't seem like there's anyone out there that can do it. And all the talk I've heard, and I believe this too, from a structural standpoint, you seem to be the only guy who might be able to unseat Flex. <laughs> I mean, it's great, great hearing that, uh, most definitely. And, um, you know, not uh, trying to unseat anyone as far as that goes. He is the reigning champ, you know, and all due respect with him. Uh, great, great champion, uh, representative of, of the industry itself. Um, but I've been there, you know, and, and I know what it feels like to win this. And, and I think uh, every year when the capabilities are where they're supposed to be, that, you know, I'm uh, equally uh, available to, to take that spot as well. But don't you think, I mean, Flex has been just kind of in a, in a, in a I guess, a category of his own at this point no one seems to be able to touch him because he brings that grainy crisp conditioning he does have some weak body parts but he just he knows how to display his physique really well and you kind of have that same air of of, of grainy you know deep cuts tiny waist great shape muscles your your problem with going up against flex in the past has been a size issue seems like you have remedied that um, you know, going into this Olympia, do you feel that, you know, you have a legitimate shot to win this thing? Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. Uh, and, and the size wise, you know, we're all weighing uh, and I've been witness to um, the top six of us weighing in and we all peek over each other's shoulders and stuff mm -hmm. uh, because we're, we're all having fun and we're all there uh, having a good time. So we are really literally within a half a pound of each other. Uh, Flex was uh, 211 eight. I was 211 eight. Um, Jose was right there on that same point uh, for you know these last these last couple shows. So uh, you, we're still there. As far as dimensionally, that might be where uh, it looks like you know they got a size advantage. But for as far as weight goes, we're still relatively the same. Uh, were you upset that you didn't win the Arnold Classic earlier this year? Did you feel you you had enough to beat Ashkenani? Of course, uh, we're we're that's what they're there for. You know. Um, I came in there uh, doing what I was supposed to do it, as this Olympia show as well. And, um, you know, so I, I think by all accounts, uh, I was prepared to win it, you know, and, but with that, you got to prepare to not win it. So <laughs> that's the hardest part of the industry that people need to uh, realize as well. When you're used to winning everything on a low amateur level and you get to this, this stage, um, you got to be a grateful and gracious uh, <laughs> loser, if you will, because if you're not first, you're last. So, uh, you know, when it didn't happen, most definitely I was upset. But, again, that's not going to stop me. Here I am again. And uh, we're going to we'll rock and roll on the Olympia stage. Do you like uh, the fact that they've kind of added the 212 division, you know, to the legitimate Olympia stage in the Orleans Arena? Does that kind of, like, make you feel like maybe there's, you got more validation? Yes. Uh, the lighting uh, is definitely better. 
the, the stage presence. You know, we, we should have been there for years, yeah, uh, personally. Um, but, you know, now you're not, you're not dealing with expo lighting, you know, because that's the expo lighting that we're dealing with when it's convention center right. uh, stuff for the prejudge. And then when you get to the uh, evening show and it's now on the Olympia stage, the lighting is, looks totally different. It's like, man, we should have been there already because that would have showcased a little differently with the muscle and probably the placings would have, would have um, been a little more uh, different than, than they were. Mm. Let's talk about uh, you working with Integral Medica in uh, Brazil as your supplement sponsor. Uh, how did you uh, meet up with them and uh, how did that come about? You know, um, I actually have to thank Dennis James for this. Uh, Dennis James um, was on the lookout for me uh, for a sponsor, you know, and, uh, and then uh, he found them. They were looking for someone, so he turned them on to me. Uh, we worked our own little magic out. And... Um, you know, it just went from there. Um, it's nice, though, to have someone who's backing you. And I know you're not a guy person, who goes. Man, he's, he's good. Yeah, you're not uh, a guy who goes out there and is constantly harassing people and trying to get contracts. You're kind of a little more low key about was. it. <laughs> yeah, and you're the worst marketer of yourself of anyone that I know, which is yeah. why you appear so humble. But you know, it's nice when you have a company that believes in you and, and can help you pay the bills, and you can represent them with the you know with honor in a sense. Uh, I didn't know this, but they've been, well, you told me they've been around for a very long time, this company, huh? Yeah, 32 years. They've been the number one supplement company in Brazil. Wow. And, um, you know, I'm definitely blessed and grateful to have them uh, in my corner on this. They've been a fantastic supporter of what I've done. I'm part of their darkness line, which is is, is bodybuilding, uh, right. more hardcore bodybuilding. They do have their integral medical side, which they have, uh, you know, your, your physique competitor, your, your figure and fitness as well. But uh, they've got a hardcore side, which is darkness, and uh, that's the part that I represent. And um, again, I've been phenomenal, phenomenal people. I've been down to Brazil. Man, uh, the atmosphere down there is electric, so I, I can't wait to compete there. If they, if they have the 212 Brazil, I'm on it. You should do the Open Brazil, kind of like Guy Sisternino did in the, the past couple you, of years. You know. <laughs> he did well. you would probably win it. <laughs> you know why you're bullshitting. When I was there... Yeah. I was standing side stage when it was happening, and I saw some looks come back from a couple couple of uh, well-known in individuals in the industry. They looked back to me, and they, and they pointed to the stage, and they just <laughs> they gave me a nod. So I was like, <laughs> I know, but I'm here to have fun, guys, so not on the stage. So Maybe next year. You never know. Now, David, yeah. um, being the fact that you have to make a weight class, um, how do you feel about how they do the weigh-ins, you know, as far as how many days out from the show? Do you think that that's acceptable to you, or do you, would you like to see it change? I'm, I'm on the fence. It's neither here nor there. It's like, you know what, uh, let them put it wherever. I mean, normally it should be, I guess, a, a day out from the show. So if we're competing on the uh, Friday night, um, the the press conference or whatever on Thursday should should have the, the live weigh-in. Or, That's what you know, I think. But they don't want to do it live, you know. Uh, uh, do it, you know, of course, behind the closed doors things. I liked it when, when they put it up on the stage last time and it actually flashed up on the little... Yeah, I like that. I love that. I, I think that's, that's exciting. It might actually add some excitement to the press conference to let you guys weigh in and, and you know, see what you look like. It gives us a little sneak peek of, of what you guys are bringing to the stage. And uh, I'm all about how to make the show more entertaining. And I think that a weigh-in would be tremendous. You know, uh, yeah, especially I a day think, out. I think it would add to it. Is it a disadvantage, you know, when you give guys too many days to, to fill up? I mean, especially for guys that, you know, that probably are not even in the weight class. Now, I'm not saying any of the top guys fit that because all you guys make weight, you know, no matter when they hold it. But it, I, I don't know. It, it, it just seems uh, some people suggest that they should do the weigh-in right before you guys get on stage. And if you don't make it, you're done. What do you think about that? Ooh. Well, uh, you know what? Uh, I'm a... Uh... All about a stickler for the rules, and, and if uh, <laughs> if they do it right before we get on stage and you don't make it, then you're DQ right off the bat. I mean, yeah. none, no more of this coming in at 217 and, right. and, and then coming back an hour later. To me, if you're overweight uh, and you know specifically when they're going to weigh you in, one, that's the fault of the trainer. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you have one, if you have a coach. Uh, two, you should know better. You're a pro. Conduct yourself like a pro. And, and, and get yourself down to where you need to be. Let me ask you a question. What do you think about this uh, classic physique division? If you were starting over in bodybuilding, would you still be a bodybuilder or you think you'd find yourself in the classic physique division? 
I'd still be a bodybuilder, man. I, I, I love doing this. The end result is, um, is, is definitely what, what I look forward to, not the process. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, uh, I, I understand why they're adding those types of things in. And, uh, and I, I could see it, you know, still being there far after we're gone. And I, and I get it. Uh, so, you know, I'll just I'll keep my, my opinions and reservations about that sort of part to myself, you know, and, and do what I have to do. I, you know, I really haven't given a whole lot of thought. You know, respect still goes on both lines whenever you're training. You're training hard. You're, you're, you're trying to do what we're doing. And by no means is it easy, no matter whether you're class of physique, uh, a natural 212 competitor, open class uh, guy or, or uh, female or whichever physique you are going for it's it's not easy and and that's why i'm grateful to be in the the limited uh percentage of 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 the population that can do this well the reason i ask is because when you turn pro you you probably could have got if they had that division you certainly could have done it in either division probably because you're for your height at your weight you probably were right there you know on on that middleweight cusp um if you wanted to stick with the classic physique division i i just you know when i see people uh, nowadays, it's hard for some guys to make, you know, choices, especially guys like yourself with the tiny waist and the great proportion. You kind of can go back and forth from division to division. Yeah, but I, I think, you know, um, was what I'm seeing, though, is, is the older people are getting and if they've laid off, things like that, they're coming back. And, of course, they're going into the, the, the classic. Yeah. And, and that's understandable, too, because of the fact of certain body parts won't respond, excuse me, won't respond as... Uh, easy as they did when they were younger and, and earlier in their career and, and i get it but like i said with everybody i said when i'm done <laughs> i am done it's not going to be a comeback i'm not <laughs> doing i'm not doing no other stuff i'll still be connected at some point with it but uh you know it'll it'll i'll still train hard but but when it's over it's over and, and i'll make the decision on that i'm not letting the contest or a placing make that decision you know Jose Raymond told us he's got one more year left. Uh, this next year will be his last year, and then he's going to retire. You know, start a family. Oh. Uh, are you close to that that mark, or do you see yourself around for no. another, a couple of years? I see. I see definitely uh, a couple more. Jose, I definitely understand his his position, his plight. Uh, you know, he he and uh, Michaela are, are trying to have a family, you know, and I've already been there, done that. I've got yeah. mine. She was screaming <laughs> next door here. I just heard her like, <laughs> for you to get up. So mama's home now. Uh, but I, I definitely understand, you know, as we get older, especially dudes, man, when you're in your 40s uh, and you're trying to start a family, no joke, you know, that as well as I do, chasing a kid around is not an easy task, man. That's more winded than you can get in the gym. So <laughs> I know uh, exactly you what you're talking about. Too. <laughs> you do it early enough, man, so that you have time to enjoy your kid. You know, you don't want to be a George Clooney, 56 years old, trying to have like <laughs> twins and chase them around. Because it's like, you know what? I, I, I don't, it's, do it. Get yourself early if you can financially afford it, and then uh, you go from there. So I'm I'm done with that. Yeah, I'm 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 going to be 50 next year, and I'm going to be chasing newborns around. So I'm I, I I waited even beyond the 40 and chasing around. I'm 50 and chasing around. So Oof. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But but now I'm not competing anymore, so I don't have to worry about that. Well, David, uh, I want to wish you the best of luck over the next couple weeks, you know, getting ready for the Olympia. Obviously, we'll see you in Vegas at the weigh-in. And uh, when is the weigh-in? It's Thursday. What day? Oh, it's actually Wednesday, right? Yeah, I believe uh, Wednesday when we're – when the 212 guys, when we're checking in, uh, the weigh-in will be Wednesday. Uh, (laughs) If that's the case, yeah. When do you get to Vegas? Do you have to go to like even earlier now because you want to make sure you're ready to make weight? Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna arrive uh, Tuesday morning. Uh, first thing in the morning, really early, probably about eleven o'clock in the morning on Tuesday, mm-hmm. and uh, get set up and make sure I'm good to go. All right. Well, best of luck with the travel. We'll see you in Vegas, and uh, good luck trying to unseat Flex Lewis. <laughs> I appreciate it, Dave, man. Thank you so much for having me on. You guys are always awesome. I uh, just want to definitely thank my wife, uh, Nikki. She's been fantastic in my corner. Scott Stevens and, and Integral Medica, the Darkness Line. Uh, the guys have been fantastic, and we'll see you all in Vegas. All right. And that's going to take us to the end of another episode of Live with RX Muscles Iron Road to the Olympia, brought to you by Yamamoto Nutrition and ProTan. I'm Dave Palumbo. We'll see you next time. <laughs>